Japan is known to the world as the land of engineering and innovation, the discipline, creativity, and perseverance of Japan, and its citizens have resulted in many technological and architectural marvels that have left the world in awe. The spectacular construction we will be talking about in today's video, Japan's Kansai Airport, also known as the Floating Airport. As the name suggests, it is the world's first offshore airport, built on a completely man-made island, as you can imagine, construction was no easy task. Two mountains were flattened to build the island, and at the time of its completion, it was the most expensive civil engineering project to date. Japan is tectonically placed in an area prone to frequent earthquakes and typhoons. Therefore, the airport had to be designed and built in such a way that it would withstand these calamities. The engineers succeeded in overcoming this hurdle, but the project is presented with an even bigger problem. This unique airport is actually sinking into the ocean. The proposal to build this floating the airport dates back to 1968, and it was initially meant to be built in the city of Kobe, but this city did not comply with the proposal, and the planners were compelled to look for other locations, looking closely at the problems faced with the struggling airport of Osaka, and also the setbacks learned from the drafting of the Narita Airport, the planners opted to find a location in which construction could be carried around the clock, and also would be Far from densely populated areas, after much consideration, a proposal was penned to construct an artificial island in Osaka Bay, in which the airport could be built. Taking into consideration that, Japan's geographic composition exists mainly of mountains, with very low flat land available, and with the country's population saturating rapidly in cities, this seemed like the best way forward. The construction of what would become the world's second largest man-made island began in 1987. The project initially set out to cost $8 billion, but eventually stacked up to a staggering $20 billion with repair costs. The decision for the airport to be built on the water came about, as the Ministry of Transport was not willing to pay exorbitant amounts for compensation to those individuals and companies who would have had to move out of the residences. It would have also comparatively been more expensive to build the airport on land at a slower rate of construction, the cost to the environment would have also been too high. The Kansai airport is in fact made up of two islands, each ultimately supporting one runway in the terminal, although construction began in 1987, focus was given to Island 1 which would be completed in 1994. Island 2 would not be completed until 2007. At the inception, first came the considerable task of building the island, this took over three years, and required the flattening of two local mountains to build the foundation. Land reclamation began by filling sand at the designated area in Osaka Bay, reclaimed land that is like a wet sponge, before it can support the enormous weight of airport buildings, it must be transformed into a dry dense foundation, to achieve this transformation, the contact construction crews laid sand 5 feet deep atop the clay seabed, and installed 2.2 million vertical pipes filled with moisture, absorbing sand to vacuum the water from the clay seabed. Construction of the airport facilities and terminal on Island 1 began in 1991, following the completion of the island, initially, one runway in the terminal was built. Italian architect Renzo Piano, whose works include the Pompidou Centre in Paris and the Chard in London, designed the main terminal building of Kansai International Airport. The terminal is an impressive 1.7 kilometers in length, making it the longest terminal in the world. A highlight of the terminal design is that its roof is designed in the shape of an airfoil to promote better airflow. Parallel to the terminals and runway, a bridge spanning 3 kilometers was constructed, connecting the airport to the commercial district of Rinku Town. The two-tiered bridge cost approximately $1 billion to build, and it accommodates six lanes of traffic and two railway lines. In 2003 work on the second terminal and the runway began and was completed in 2009. Plans have been developed for further expansion, including a third runway in a new cargo terminal, but these plans are yet to be realized. 
A significant part of the airport design and construction focused on protection from Japan's extreme weather events. A major test of this came with the Kobe earthquake in January 1995. Also known as the Great Hansen Earthquake, this was Japan's worst earthquake since 1923, and it left more than 6,000 people dead. The epicenter was about 20 kilometers away from the airport, despite extensive damage to buildings at a similar distance, the airport was almost undamaged. This success is attributed to the use of sliding joints in all airport building construction. It has also coped well with several typhoons over the years including an extreme one in 1998 with winds of over 210 km per hour. But in 2018 when Typhoon Jebi hit the airport, it caused extensive damage, waves broke over the airport walls and flooded the runways, and a tanker damaged the bridge. Full operations at the airport did not start again for nearly a month, although this was an extreme weather event, it again started a discussion about the problems with the airport and how it was sinking closer to sea level. Global warming and the environment degradation plays a major part in deciding the future of the airport, with rising sea levels and increased adverse weather conditions, the airport finds itself in a dire situation. Artificial islands made through land reclamation are inevitably at the risk of sinking over time. The engineers of Kansai Airport were wrongly optimistic about how much the island would sink in over how long. They expected the first island to sink between 19 to 25 feet and settle at 13 feet above sea level over a period of 50 years, whereas in reality, it had sunk 38 feet since it opened doors. They fear that the island will sink further into sea level by 2056 and eventually be submerged. The risk of further sinking is that as it approaches sea level, any storms or typhoons are more likely to cause water to break over the seawall and engulf the airport. There is little that can be done to change this fundamentally, but the construction does allow for some minimizing damage and disruption. Engineers have undertaken many preventive measures, with over $150 million spent to strengthen the perimeter seawall of the island. The foundation consists of 900 columns were raised in stages, which help slow the sinking considerably. The hydraulic jacks which now have meters installed, to measure how much the airport is tilting, and has to be adjusted every two years. Runways have been raised by one meter, by adding more layers of asphalt. Another option is to raise the buildings, the foundation columns can be adjusted, by inserting metal plates to offset the sinking. Although, Japan is facing difficulties with Kansai Airport, which continues to sink at a rate of 6 centimeters per year. The country of engineering marvels has learned from their mistakes and mastered the process of building airports on reclaimed land over time. Japan now has more floating airports, namely Kobe Airport and Nagoya Central Airport. Amidst trials and tribulations, Kansai Airport was the busiest Japanese airport as of 2019, catering to over 28 million passengers and 700,000 tons of cargo movement. While it is far from being the best performing airport, it is nevertheless popular in the world of aviation. It even snatched the award for 10th most popular global airport in 2020. Second most popular medium-sized airport and best airport staff. What are your thoughts on this mega project? Leave your comments below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to Wonderful Stories. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.